Just got back, five days, three trailers, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New Mexico. Did we make any money? Stick around and find out. Trip to RV Transport. Right now headed to Goshen, Indiana. I left San Antonio yesterday, stopped in West Memphis at a Flying J, spent the night, slept in the truck, got up this morning, took a shower, and yeah, it was pretty cool. Worked out well. So my plan here is to, I called last week and they said that they didn't have anything and they were gonna be closed Thursday and Friday for Thanksgiving. So I told them that I would head up on the weekend and I would report for duty on Watch Monday out. and I would take whatever, whatever jobs they had. And then towards the end of the week, get something going south, headed back home. So that's what I'm gonna do. We'll see how it works out, I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow what they've got, where I can go, whatever. And I'm willing to pretty much take anything as long as it doesn't get in any bad weather snow wise but yeah I mean that's kind of my plan for this is just take whatever they got work for a few days go wherever I gotta go and then hopefully head back home and get home you know weekend time Saturday Sunday something like that but we'll see who knows I and mean, if they have a ton of work then maybe I'll just stay and try to make some money I did sign up for CDL class so I start my to get my CDL license next month so that's pretty exciting I I'm actually excited to do that and get the license and then I can tow any trailer really so it, I won't have any weight restrictions or anything like that so yeah I mean we're gonna we're gonna keep doing this and see how long I can do this for and yeah, so I'm going to get my CDL next month and then continue on my journey of education after that and see if I can do this as more of a side gig versus a full-time gig. So just to remind everybody, I'm not, I'm not looking to do this full-time. I'm just looking to, to do this to make a little bit of extra income while I go to school. So that's it. I'm, I, I saw a lot of people in my last video comment about, you know, you got to just stay out and you got to just do it. And again, I'm, I'm not looking to do this full time. I'm just looking to make a little bit of extra money. And I don't know if you can or if you can't. If I can, you know, do this seven or eight days in a row, well, that's all I'm allowed to do by the DOT is eight days. So we'll see how it works out. So this trip, Normally, I would have called on Friday, you know, reserved a booking or whatever they had, and then head up, pick it up, and then go deliver it. But since they were closed, again, I'm doing this one a little different. I'm just going up there, going to see what they got, and then Monday, take whatever they have, come back, take whatever they have again, in hopes that they can reserve me something going south so I can get back home. Uh, yeah. So last night I stayed at the truck stop again. I cut the bed down. So my last trip I came out, I had my bed too high. So I don't know if you can see where it is now. It's kind of even with my, with my headrest right here. So it's not too bad. Actually, it's a little lower, but before it was, you know, like up to here. So it was uh, four or five inches taller than what it is now. And I didn't know. So whenever I would be in it, I would be really close to the ceiling and it just wasn't comfortable. So last night it was comfortable other than it was cold. So the temperature got down to about 40 degrees, uh, high 30s, something like that. 
there in West Memphis and it was cold in the truck. When I first got there, it wasn't too bad, but you know, the truck was still warm. I had the, the heater going on my way up there, but you know, I don't know what time it was. In the middle of the night, I would wake up because it was, it was cold. So maybe I can address that somehow. Maybe I can, you know, I have a little generator at home. Maybe I can figure out how to get that little generator with a tiny space heater and put it in here. But we'll see. I'm, I'm afraid of people stealing my stuff. You know, I mean, people just, people are people. And so I've got to figure out how to get that generator in the back without it walking away. But anyway, so I did that and it was a success. I, I did not sleep well because it was cold, but I did sleep, so there's that. Then this morning I woke up, I had a shower credit, so every, at Pilot and Flying J, for every 50 gallons of fuel you, you fill up, they give you a shower credit. So I had a shower credit that I used this morning, and it was cool, like you, you register on the app and tell them that you want to get a shower and then it reserves you a shower and then it texts you and says, okay, your shower's ready. Go to shower number 13 and here's your code. So I went in, found my shower, punched in the code on the, on the little keypad, door unlocked. I went in, took a shower. Shower was hot, the room was private so it had a sink and a toilet shower you know just like for all my military friends it's the you know shower that you would experience downrange it's not one that you want to put your feet on so I always have some shower shoes at least for me I have shower shoes and I don't know oh and they also provided towels so you could have a floor mat and then another towel to dry off and then they had a washcloth. There was a soap dispenser. I didn't check to see if there's any soap. I brought my own soap, but it worked out well. Shower was nice. I feel good, refreshed today. And now we're headed to Goshen. So I should be there in probably eight hours or so. And we will see. I'm gonna drive by the lot, see how full it is, if there's anything there and maybe that'll give us some inclination on what will be available tomorrow and if there will be anything available, we'll see. I don't know, hopefully there is. Don't wanna be sitting around. So that's what we're doing. We're driving to Goshen today. So far I've, I've spent $150.29 on fuel. I drove 708.3 miles. So 150 bucks into this trip. Again, I'll keep track of the whole thing let everybody know what I made, if I made anything. I'm gonna try to keep this one a little shorter than the last one. The last one was an hour long. But damn, I got some views. I think it's up to like 6,000 views right now. <laughs> Episode number one. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for supporting it and watching it and all the feedback, it's incredible. I'm gonna take all those, all those comments and all that feedback and try to implement it into my, my thing here, so. Thank you. Thank you for liking it. Thank you for commenting and subscribing. I mean, golly, it's like every day my phone would just be like, you have a new subscriber. So everybody must be into RV transport. I don't know, or like, like watching it. So we'll see. All right, well, I will uh, get back to you guys whenever I figure it out. Good morning, day two. Let's see, it's November, November 27th, Monday. I got to dispatch this morning, told them I'd take whatever they had. So they hooked me up, Bay City, Michigan, got a 23 foot travel trailer, a surveyor. It's a heavy little bastard, 7,000 pounds, but uh, yeah, should be there within three and a half hours or so, do a drop off and then head back. I mean, the worst part is it's freezing, 23 degrees outside, and it's windy too, so dang. I had to, you know, hook up, get back in the truck, go out, torque the lug nuts, get back in the truck. It was miserable, for sure. So we're headed to Bay City, Michigan. Gonna drop this thing off. 
Uh, it is about a 230 miles or so. I will uh, let you guys know when I drop off what I made. Here we are dropping it off in Michigan. Pulled okay. It was super windy, so you can definitely feel the wind for sure. But this is it. Pretty cool. I'm gonna upload my paperwork, head on back to Indiana. Just dropped off. And let's see here, what did I get paid? I got paid $302.09 to drop off in Bay City, Michigan. To be fair though, all those fees and stuff, like the, I gotta have a $2,500 insurance escrow account. I gotta pay 10% for plates. I gotta have all this stuff. All that is being deducted out of these runs that I'm doing now. So. I don't know what I actually would have been paid, but you know most of it got deducted out of this one. So I probably would have been in the $400 plus territory, but I really don't know. Dropped off and it went really, really well. The lady came out immediately. She didn't, I didn't have to wait at all. She went through the, the trailer and then invited me in to sign the paperwork, signed it, uploaded it, sent it. Then I called and they said that they had three options for me. I could either go to Pennsylvania. Okay, got a phone call. Parents called, had to answer. Anyways, they gave me three options. I could go to Pennsylvania, which is about uh, a little over 300 miles. I can go to Minnesota, which was around 500 miles. Or I could go to Arizona, which was 2,000 miles. Man, I really wanted to take that Arizona one because, I mean, it's the biggest payday, 2,000 miles. But I started looking at the map. So anyways, I said, okay, let me think about it. I'll call you right back. So I looked at the map and I mapped out the Arizona one. I mean, I wouldn't get there till Thursday. And then it was about 15 plus hours, probably 16 hours from San Antonio. If I went there, I'd have to drive 16 hours to get home. I mean, if I could have made it like, I mean, I, I didn't know what to do. I wanted the big payday, but at the same time, I could, I'd could i have to just go and that would be it. And then I can't come back until probably January because in December, December 11th, I'm starting my CDL school. So I chose to go to, uh, I, I just, I just, I told the lady to pick one, you know, whichever one would be harder for her to get rid of from somebody else. And so she gave me the the Pennsylvania one. So I'm headed there now, fifth wheel, gonna hook it up and take it to Pennsylvania. And yeah, so right now I'm in Michigan. The weather's terrible, it's snowing. There's a uh, snow starting to accumulate on the roads, so I'm gonna have to slow down. Speed limit where I'm at right now is 70, but that's not gonna last much longer with the snow starting to build up on the roads. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what time I get back. I should be back in a couple of hours. I'll be able to hook up and then I'll still have a few hours left on my books or on my logs to, to keep going if the roads don't get too bad. Headed back to Goshen now. I'm gonna pick up a trailer and head to Pennsylvania. Here we are, Swanton, Ohio. Picked up last night after I went to Michigan and uh, from Indiana to Erie, Pennsylvania, roughly six hours or so. So I wasn't gonna make it. One, I was tired, and two, I was gonna run out of time in my logbook. So I stopped at Swanton, Ohio, and I have gotta figure out a way to get this truck to be warm at night without running the engine. Cause it is 19 degrees and this thing is frozen. Yeah, that's my mission when I get home is figure that out. All right, I'm hooked to a, uh, looks like 27 foot fifth wheel, GVWR 9,900 pounds. And it's called an Arctic Wolf by Forest River. And I like towing fifth wheels. Like fifth wheels are 
way better than towing travel trailers in my opinion especially these short ones the 30 foot fifth wheel man even though they're heavier they tow really well oh another thing is my i have airbags on this truck and they are frozen so they won't they won't do anything so i delivered that trailer yesterday to michigan i drop it off and my routine is take the airbag air them down because it's too harsh of a ride if you keep pressure in them and i got this warning that said that my compressor was frozen so it wouldn't do anything so that's a bummer so i rode home with pressure in the airbags all the way <laughs> thing was bouncing around it's a pretty rough ride when you don't have a load on it uh let's see what else is going on find out how much i get paid from this one when i get there i'm guessing somewhere four or five hundred bucks so i think after this i'll be even i won't be in the hole i won't be up but i'll be even so my plan is to just stay out and keep doing these short runs like or whatever runs they offer me and see if i can make some money and then hopefully they offer me something back to texas i don't i don't necessarily need to go home today but you know eventually i want to go home i don't want to stay out for weeks or months at a time we'll see i'm gonna keep on trucking down to erie pennsylvania once i get there i'll do a little walk around of this trailer it was dark and cold last night when i hooked this thing up so the last thing i wanted to do was break out the camera and walk around this thing just dropped off in erie i know that i said i'd do a walk around but it wasn't gonna happen there was way too much snow it was way too cold they had me park on this incline and it was nothing but ice and when i pulled up and stopped the truck was sliding backwards and so i was afraid to unhitch the trailer there in fear that it was just going to slide once i disconnected it from the truck so i moved it to a different spot disconnected it no problems okay so how much did i make 468 dollars and 41 cents to go from indiana to erie pennsylvania almost 500 bucks it's not bad however this trip i mean just because of the weather it took me so long an entire day basically i'm not going to get back till 8 p.m back to goshen i left last night at 7 i'm getting back at 8 so 25 hours it took and i just filled up with fuel and it cost me 206 dollars but to be fair that was from when i dropped off in michigan yesterday till all the way to erie and then back you know maybe maybe an hour away from Erie right now in Ohio still or I mean I'm in Ohio so I don't know so I think right now I'm probably about even with getting up here and then driving driving to Michigan and then driving to Erie headed back now I called when I dropped it off maybe two hours ago and they said they didn't have anything so I said I'd call back later this afternoon and see if they get anything in so we'll see if not, I'm going to go hang out in Goshen and wait till in the morning and see if they get something and take it. Therefore, we go back and we wait for the next one. The next two or three or four, however many it's going to be. So, that's where we're at. Headed back. I think we're even, though. I don't think we've lost money at this point. Until maybe tonight, because it is cold outside. And I, I can't. This truck is, is freezing. I... On the next trip, I need to bring a generator and a small space heater because it is just too cold outside. And in the cab, it gets cold and maybe I'm a wuss, I don't know. All right, well, I'll let you guys know when I get on the next one, if there is a next one. All right, it's Wednesday. I'm here at the yard. Hook two, 24 foot travel trailer, GVWR 7,600 pounds. This is a crossroads sunset headed to Albuquerque, New Mexico. There it is, sunset. It's pretty windy. That's gonna be it though. It's gonna take me three days. 
I don't have uh, much time left in today. It's already one o'clock in the afternoon, so yeah, I'm gonna get on the road. It's Thursday today, and this one's pretty cool. So I'm going to Albuquerque, New Mexico. But the cool part is, is that it takes me right through my hometown. So I get to stop and eat lunch with my parents. I don't know what we're gonna do yet. They said they wanna do steak, but there's this little place called Dog and Shake, and I love it. It's got cheeseburgers and hot dogs and shakes, but you know, we'll see wherever they wanna go. The trailer didn't get delivered to the yard till late in the afternoon, so I wasn't able to leave Goshen, which is on the East Coast, till about like one in the afternoon maybe. So I made it to Overland Park, Kansas, last night. And the weather was nice. It was like uh, in the 50s, so it was good. I came out doing my truck inspection and I noticed that there was a diesel leaking all over the ground from my auxiliary tank. I had filled up the night before. This was on Tuesday. I had filled up on my way back from Pennsylvania. I topped off both tanks, you know, the truck tank and the, and the auxiliary tank. And I guess maybe when I put the nozzle into the truck tank, it may have gotten some debris into the flapper valve, cause it to not seal. So therefore, when I came out in the morning, my auxiliary tank is a gravity fed tank and it had leaked everywhere. So I don't know how much fuel I lost, probably at least 10 gallons, at least 10 gallons, because I only got about 500 miles out of that auxiliary tank and normally I can get more than that. It's a 50 gallon auxiliary tank and so that was a bummer. That cost me a bunch of money. So I put some fuel in it last, or yeah, last night before I stopped and I checked it this morning when I woke up and no leaks. So I put my finger onto the rubber seal and tried to wipe it off on that flapper valve. So maybe I got whatever was stuck in there making it leak. But anyways, back to the trip, headed to Albuquerque. I'm not gonna be able to make it all the way because it's about 12 or 13 hours from Overland Park, Kansas. So I'll have to stop probably. So today I'm gonna go through Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and then into New Mexico. So I'll probably stop somewhere either in Texas or right when I get into New Mexico and I'll still have two or three hours left in the morning, which is okay. I don't know what time they open, but it'll be Friday. I'll be able to deliver. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Just gonna keep on trucking, go eat lunch. I'm on uh, the Kansas Turnpike now. Oh, last night I put $188 in fuel in, and that was in Beaver, Missouri. So about 280 miles ago. Again, I'll add all this up at the end of the trip and we'll figure out how much I made, how much I spent on this whole thing. All right then. Okay, what's up? Here in New Mexico, I think it's called Tucumcari, New Mexico. It's in the northeastern part of New Mexico. And I'm just sitting here getting ready to go. I'm on my 15 minute pre-trip inspection letting the truck warm up so before you go out on any of these runs you got to do a pre-trip and a post-trip so i'm going to do my pre-trip right now basically walk around the truck walk around the trailer check the lights check the tires make sure everything's still connected you know just do your due diligence so you don't have any safety stuff out on the road however somebody from the last video said that they wanted me to do a walk around of my truck so i'm going to do it real quick i don't want to get into details on much because i don't know that i'm qualified to review things i can give my opinions but i'm just going to show you what i'm working with and maybe in a future video i can do some reviews on my experience with these things all right so anyways this is the uh truck ram 3500 dually and man this thing is incredible i mean i've owned three quarter tons and a lot before and you know this truck pulls like nothing else it's got the hl motor and man it's it's incredible all right so let's start on the inside here it's dirty but you know living in this thing so 
I've got the, uh, this is my iPad here, and I use this for my log books, electronic logging, and also a app called Trucker Path, which is like a GPS for big trucks. And it works really well because it tells you where all the way stations and stuff like that are parking truck stops. So it's pretty handy. Okay, so pretty standard in the front, nothing, nothing special. Here in the back, this is my bed. Uh, I've got these totes down here. I got these from Home Depot and I just put all my clothes in here. On my first trip, I had a suitcase and it was kind of pain in the butt to log, lug around especially if I'm going into a truck stop shower. So I got rid of the suitcase and I'm just down to a backpack. So every morning I'll dig through here and find out what I need and then load it up in my backpack and head out. Up here is my bed. This mattress came from Amazon. It's like a foam mattress that I just cut. And I built this two by four base. It doesn't sit very high off the ground, but you know, it's still comfy and solid. And it goes across the back. And yeah, it works out okay. Uh, then in the back here, I've got a toolbox in the back, right by the tailgate. It's got, this is where I keep all my weight distribution hitch, uh, my regular, two inch ball hitch, my battery for my quick disc, or my, uh, the brakes, emergency brakes, my torque wrench, that kind of thing. I've got the B&W Companion. It goes into the puck system for a Ram, really easy to use. Uh, it works really well. I mean, that thing, it's crazy. Pretty easy to hook up. Pretty easy to detach. And then even further back, that's my auxiliary tank, 50 gallon tank with a toolbox on top. On top of that, I've got hand tools, just more tools that I may need in the future but don't need quick access to, like in the back of the truck. So that's my auxiliary tank. I also put a little fuel filter, like an inline fuel filter right there, just to, just to help. And then, my weight distribution hitch is the Blue Ox. And the thing I like about it is these saddles are really easy to put on. So it's just got a, a bolt right there that you loosen up and it goes right in there. But it's easy to install on any trailer. Yeah, and then here's my breakaway battery. It's like a motorcycle battery. But they say that it meets DOT standards and it just kind of hooks on the frame and you connect the positive and negative. So instead of having a big battery right there. So that's the walk around of the truck and my rig. Oh, I forgot this big old mud flap. You gotta have this. This is a, a must. I got this from some online truck place. So yeah nothing else significant so that's it I'm gonna get on the road I got about two and a half hours to get to my destination so we'll see you there it's Friday morning we are headed to the dealer gonna make it today about two hours 30 minutes or so away 164 miles Something I've noticed about headed west is I get terrible gas mileage. I am at about 5,000 feet altitude, and I think because of the steady climb that I've done since Indiana, I have just gotten terrible mileage. And obviously I could slow down, but who wants to do that? I want to get there. This trip has taken me a long time. I started off in Indiana on Wednesday didn't get you didn't get going till a late start drove to Kansas the uh, northeastern part of Kansas around Kansas City and then the route took me straight through my hometown so I stopped ate lunch with my parents and then continued on and made it to Tucumcari, New 
Mexico last night where I stopped and it put me two and a half hours away from drop off and delivery. This, uh, this trailer isn't, isn't heavy, but man, yeah, I'm getting like eight or nine miles to the gallon at best. So I am just burning through some diesel. West coast trips kind of suck for fuel mileage, that's for sure, but they sure do pay well. We'll find out how much I get paid once I get there and drop off and submit my paperwork. But I'm hoping it's, uh, you know, 2000 plus dollars, but it's gonna cost me a lot of money and fuel just to get there. And then I'm gonna deadhead all the way home. Normally, I would just go back to Indiana. I've been going since Monday. That's when my logs started. I drove up to Indiana, did a reset, and then my log started. So I get eight days on the clock or 70 hours, whichever comes first. So I get eight days or 70 hours. And there's no way I could make it back without having to do another reset. So I think the trick is you got to figure out your hours and where it's going to put you. When I first got there, my plan was to just do whatever they had, the short runs, and that's what I did. I went to Michigan, I went to Pennsylvania, and that pretty much put me even for my fuel to get there. So those first two trips were kind of a wash. So I started out with this New Mexico trip as even. I wasn't up, I wasn't down, I was just pretty much even. But I think that's the trick, is you gotta, you gotta figure out what is going to get you the best miles out of your time. If you wanted to try to do two long runs, maybe you could pick up a run to, let's just say California, because that would take you two or three days, two or three days back, you do a reset, do another one maybe to California, two or three days, two or three days, do a reset, and then maybe go home after that. And that would take you at least 10 days. So 10 days, and you could go home with some serious cash in your pocket. I don't mean like that you're gonna get rich quick cash, but you know, I mean, it would pay you two, three, four thousand dollars in that 10 day period. So that's not too bad, you know, 200 bucks a day. And that's after your, your expenses, your fuel and your, you know, your cost of running your truck and, and all that. It, it just depends on what you can get, what's available at the time and you just gotta play it right. And you gotta accept the loads that are gonna make you money. This one, I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna clear a thousand plus dollars on this, and it's taken me five days, so we'll see. I don't know, that's not super good money. But then again, I, I should be going back to Indiana. However, Next week's my daughter's birthday, and then I've got truck driving schools for my CDL that starts. So I kind of knew this was gonna be a short one. I mean, if you really wanna make the money, you just gotta stay out and do it. And that's that's where the money is. Just staying out, doing whatever you can get done, and that's it. Still need to figure this thing out. It's gonna take me a few more days. I did talk to the lady, the dispatcher, and I asked her, you know, what's the secret? <laughs> She said that they have several guys who on their 1099s are grossing $100,000 a year. So grossing, yes, how much you're actually making, you know, you gotta figure out your expenses from there. But, you know, I don't know. There's gotta be a secret to this on how you can not go broke and make a little bit of money, have some fun. I mean, this job, this is awesome. I mean, I'm in the middle of New Mexico the scenery is beautiful, and I've never I've never been to this this part of New Mexico. I've I, I've never been to. I'm from Kansas, and I've never been to Southwest Kansas before until last night, which the snow was ridiculous. Driving through southwestern Kansas, it was crazy. It wasn't accumulating or anything, but it was just the visibility it was tough to see anything. So I think I'm gonna need a couple more trips to just figure it out. Anyways, she told me that you know they've got guys that are making $100,000 doing this, and I could see it, especially if you did the multi-haul. If you had a flatbed and you could do the multi-haul thing, 
I mean, you're getting that. Those guys are getting paid. Maybe that's the answer. Get your CDL, get a flatbed, pull a couple at a time because you make double the money going to the same destination. But now you're carrying around a flatbed trailer everywhere you go. Obviously, the worst part of this job is the deadhead. When you aren't loaded and you're driving back and forth from dealership back to the yard and dealership to home or wherever, if you're not loaded, you ain't making the money. So you got to figure out how to minimize those deadhead miles and try to do it. She told me that if you do the multi-haul thing, that sometimes they can book cars on your flatbed back up to Indiana or wherever. And I doubt you make money on that, but at least it would cover your fuel expense, which is the most expensive part, especially when you're getting seven, eight, nine miles per gallon. That is my particular situation. I think that if you wanted to do this, because you don't get paid any difference for whether you haul big trailers, small trailers, whatever, they all pay the same until they're over 12,000 pounds. And you have to have a CDL for that anyways, if you have a one ton truck. My truck, GVWR, is 14,000 pounds. And I'm allowed to carry 26,000 pounds total. So which means I can carry a 12,000 pound trailer. So anything above 12,000 pounds, you get paid for. But when you start talking about 12,000 pound trailers, now you're talking about significant pin weight in your truck, significant tongue weight on your hitch, whatever it is. If you have a fifth wheel, you're going to have two, 3,000 pounds pin weight, which will probably exceed a three quarter tons capacity. So you got to be careful. But with this company, they don't, they don't force you to do fifth wheels. You could just do travel trailers all day long. Therefore, if you had a three quarter ton truck, especially a, a Ford or a Chevy that's got a 10 speed transmission and you put a 352 or 373 gear ratio in there and you can keep your RPMs down and your fuel expense low. I mean, I don't know what those trucks get on the highway deadhead, but it's got to be better than what I'm getting. I've got the six speed Ram Assassin transmission or however you say it with a 410 gear ratio. So even deadhead, I'm not getting very good fuel economy but if you had one of those three quarter ton trucks with a lower gear ratio and all you did was travel trailers the the small ones like this 24 feet eight thousand pounds or less i mean three quarter ton truck can handle this trailer easily you don't need a one ton truck for this you don't need a dually for this but you know i will say the difference between towing with a three quarter ton and a, and a one ton dually is considerable this truck one ton dually is confidence inspiring i mean it it doesn't it's effortless how it pulls this trailer my personal trailer at home we have a open range 330 bhs so the thing is uh, you know 40 something feet long it has a gvwr 14,000 pounds it is a big trailer and when we first bought it, I had a three-quarter ton Ram, a 2018 three-quarter ton Ram. And it would pull it. Don't get me wrong. It would pull it just fine. And, oh, and it has a, about a 1,400-pound pin weight or a hitch weight. It would pull it, but you knew it was there. You knew it was there. I pull that trailer with this truck, and, yeah, you know it's there, but it is effortless. Whenever I look in the rear view and I see a semi coming up on me, it's whatever. In a three quarter ton truck, that semi would pull me into it and then blow me out as soon as it passed. The difference between a three quarter ton and a one ton towing these big trailers, you'll know. I mean, it's, it's a, I'd much rather be towing if I could with a one ton dually anything than a three quarter ton. But if I just stuck to these little 24 foot, 26 foot, 28 foot, whatever, 10,000 pounds, 8,000 pounds, cakewalk. And then you get good fuel mileage when you're deadheading. So maybe that's the key to this, is especially if, if you're out there and you own a three quarter ton truck already, there goes one by me now, three quarter ton with a big old travel trailer on the back. You might be able to make some money or more money than me because I'm putting a lot of money in fuel every time. I'm in the high single digits pulling this trailer at 70 miles an hour 
again, I could slow down, but I slow down and it's going to take me forever to get to where I'm going or get back. So, you know, if you have a three quarter ton truck, don't hesitate. I'm not trying to talk you into buying a one ton dually, but if I had a three quarter ton truck, I would definitely hesitate on pulling big fit wheels, big travel trailers, just because one, it exceeds your capacity and two, why? You make the same amount of money, whether it's a, the tiniest travel trailer or a 12,000 pound fifth wheel. Well, I get it in the economy right now, in the day that we're in, there's not much available, so you just take whatever you can get. But if you had the choice between a small travel trailer and a big fifth wheel and a three quarter ton truck, take that small travel trailer all day. Even me, I'm taking that small travel trailer all day over anything big just because my fuel economy is going to suffer. So that's my two cents on three quarter ton and one ton trucks. They're great. So if you have it, don't hesitate. Try it, figure out what's best for you. Just make sure that you maximize your time on the road, that you're constantly moving. You aren't sitting for long. I mean, you know, you have to sit for 10 hours per the regulations, but don't sit for 10 hours in one minute. Get going. Anyways, that's it. I'll get back to you when we drop this thing off. See how that goes. And then I'm headed home. I got about a 10 hour drive back to San Antonio from Albuquerque. So I'm gonna get some lunch in Albuquerque and then head back. I probably won't make it tonight. I have to stop somewhere, get a couple hours of sleep in the back of the truck, and then finish up my journey home. All right then. Here in Albuquerque, just dropped the unit off. See it right there. Uh, went well, no problems at all. They came out here and helped me out real quick. So it's nice. I'm gonna tidy up, load up, hit the rope. Yeah. Dropped off at Albuquerque. I called back, see if they had anything else. The only thing that would lure me back in to continue this run would be a run to Texas. And they had one. It was going to Cleburne, Texas, which is uh, about s south of Dallas somewhere. So it's about, uh, I don't know, maybe, I don't even know how far from San Antonio, four hours. So it was tempting. But then she asked if I had my CDL, I said no. So apparently it was a big fifth wheel and I couldn't take it. They offered me uh, Minnesota and Idaho. Neither one sounded appealing, so we're headed home. We uh, got about eight hours to get to San Antonio. So hopefully uh, we'll get there tonight. Just stop, put more fuel in, $231.93 in Vaughn, New Mexico. That was the second best meal of this trip. They had sausage on a stick and chicken strip and potato wedges. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but I ate all of that. Maybe I'm working on my trucker body. I don't know. Get, getting that trucker body down. So headed home. Driving home is gonna cost me probably 200 bucks. So I got paid $2,053.50. Let me get down to the exact change. Excuse me, $2,058.37. That includes a $40 car wash or a RV wash. So I had to pay the dealer out of my money $40 to wash the RV, the trailer, and also $12 in tolls when I went through Kansas. So what's that? $52. So I made about a one thousand or excuse me two thousand six dollars and thirty seven cents i asked them if they would email me my settlement sheet so i could know i could tell you exactly what i made without all the fees that they take out and eventually those fees are going to stop eventually i will build up my twenty five hundred dollars in escrow 
I will eventually pay off the tags, I'll eventually pay off all the stuff that they take out, and I won't have any of those fees removed from my payments anymore. You can expect that they took out roughly $250 or so for my escrow account and some other miscellaneous stuff. So I probably, if I had to guess, if I had the settlement sheet, it would probably be about $2,350, $2,400, something like that is what this paid for me to go to New Mexico. But everything that they're paying me now has all these fees taken out of it. So I wish that I had those settlement sheets so I could tell you exactly what I'm being paid. I, I mean, I'm telling you exactly what I'm getting deposited into my account, but that's not what I'm being paid. I'm being paid more. They're just subtracting these fees until I pay them off or with the $2,500 thing, I have $2,500 in an escrow account. With that being said, I am gonna go home and still have about $1,500 payment that I made that I'm positive on this trip. That's after everything that I paid for, everything. Fuel, I did a Super 8 Motel. Well, I did a couple of those. I tried to find the cheapest ones. They were, the one I stayed in last night was like 44 bucks. So let's just say $50 after tax. You know, I could have made another 150 bucks if I wouldn't have stayed in hotels, but it's so cold that I'd have to run the truck all night. And I think that me running the truck all night would cost me 20 bucks in diesel. And I just don't, I, I'd rather pay 20 more bucks and stay in a room where I have a hot shower and I'm not in the back seat of a truck. But I am gonna work on that. I am gonna get my generator and get it ready for the next trip. So I have a heater in the truck and I can utilize the truck more. When I first came into this, my idea was to stay in the truck, stay in a hotel, stay in the truck, stay in a hotel. So switch off nights and do it like that. But with it getting down into the teens, I'm not freezing. I have to just go get a hotel. So I'm not, I'm not ashamed to get a hotel. A lot of people on my comments on the last one were criticizing me for getting a hotel, which is fine, I get it. That's how you make the money. Minimize expense, bring your lunch, don't stay in a hotel, watch your miles, and try to just not spend anything. And I'm gonna work my way up to that. This is my second trip, I just gotta figure it out. And I wish I would've brought a heater and my generator on this one, and that's what I would've done. I would've stayed in the truck more, but it was just too cold. So anyways, I'm going home with 1,500 bucks and my bank account. It took me five days to get it, so that's not too bad. I mean, 1,500 bucks in five days. If I would've went back to Goshen, it would've taken me two days to get there. I would've been out of time. I have uh, 24 hours left that I can drive. So I would've been out of time. I would've had to do a reset. So that puts me Monday afternoon when I could start driving again. So I could've taken more runs and I could've done this again. I could've done two more, I could've done another Michigan and Pennsylvania and then hope for another southern run to Texas and that would have paid because up to this point I'm I mean I'm I'm making money now I'm no longer losing money I have money on my card or money in my account that pays for all my expenses if I stayed out for another five days could I put another 1500 bucks on there or more because now I'm making money maybe it would be two thousand dollars so maybe I could make 3,500 bucks in 10 days. That's not too bad. $350 a day. And that's after all my stuff. I mean, like I said, I, I'm gonna still have 1,500 bucks left when I get home. That includes my fuel home. I'm guessing that my fuel home is gonna be about 200 bucks. I got $1,700 on my card. I'll probably put 200 bucks in fuel when I get home, which I will let everybody know exactly what it costs me and what I make. And we'll go from there. Again, my, I have my daughter's birthday and I start school December 11th for my CDL. I don't know guys, I kind of like it. I like the job. I like the, the fact that I could just be like, nah, you know what, I'm going home. And here I go, I'm going home. I'm gonna be home tonight, get to spend some time with my family, get to go to my daughter's birthday party next week. 
and then we'll go from there. My truck driving school is supposed to start on December 11th, but I found out that they don't give any days for Christmas. The next one after that is January 8th. I may do another run before Christmas, take Christmas off with my family, go to school January 8th, and then hit it again, try to make some money, have my CDL, be able to pull anything that they got. It's cool. I like it. I like this job, but I'm not naive to think that I'm not going to do it for free. I think that you just got to figure it out. Like this trip, I went from Indiana, which I think is, uh, let's look it up. Yeah, Goshen elevation is about 800 feet. And I just went to 7,000 feet. So I climbed over a mile on the way there. So that just killed my fuel economy. I was getting six, seven miles of the gallon. But, you know, I'm going up those steep grades in those hills in New Mexico, and it was just killing it. But now I'm deadheading on the open road. I'm getting 16, 17 on the, what, what it tells me anyways. How accurate that is, I don't know, but I guarantee you it's at least double. You, you just got to figure it out. Is a westerly run to New Mexico worth it? I could have slowed down and improved my fuel economy, but then I'm, I'm up against the clock. If you have time available to drive, you need to be driving. If you are sitting, you're not making any money. You've got to find the balancing act of what's going to make you money. Are the short runs, are the long runs, what's it going to be? I don't know. There was another guy who was delivering there right before me. He was coming from Oregon and he had a F-250 or an F-350, I think, but it was a gas truck. And he was trying to convince me that gas is the way to go. And I don't believe it. I don't believe it at all. He said he gets six miles to the gallon. He had no external tanks. So that guy is stopping every 200 miles at whatever gas station he can find, hoping that he can find one. Then he's got to pull in there with a trailer on the back of his truck and try to get fuel. Me, I go to the truck stops and I'm able to get diesel. He says that his truck tops out at 60 or 65 in those hills, and I was doing 75 plus easily, effortlessly with this truck. So I don't know if a gas truck is the way to go. I mean, some people like gas. I know that a gas truck, buying one new, is significantly cheaper than a diesel. I mean, probably eight to $10,000 less to buy a gas engine, but I just don't see the benefit at all. To me, diesel's where it's at. I have the power to get to those hills. I get better fuel economy than a gas engine does. So I don't know. For all of you at home, the question is, if you have a three quarter ton truck, should you do it? And I 100% think you should. Just accept the smaller trailers and that's it. And just do what you can with that. A three quarter ton truck could easily pull those trailers like I was saying earlier and you would be just fine making some money and you get better fuel economy than I'm getting in a one ton with 14 gears. Now, obviously I can pull, I have I have more options as to what I can pull as far as spit wheels go because my payload capacity is a lot higher than a three quarter ton. This is my fourth trip and out of the four I pulled one fifth wheel and three travel trailers. So 75% of my runs have been travel trailers and that could be for you too if you have a one ton truck do it take the bed off get yourself a flatbed and do multi hauls because those pay double the money and honestly i think that's how you can make some money because instead of me getting paid two thousand dollars i got paid double that for the same run to go to the same place now granted i'd be pulling a flatbed trailer all the way back to texas so my fuel fuel economy would suffer for sure. And I have to buy that trailer, which isn't cheap. A lot to think about. However, I like it. The scenery through, through New Mexico was incredible. And just, just seeing the open road, it's, it's something about it. I have a lot of audiobooks and podcasts. That's all I'm doing is just listening to audiobooks and podcasts on the way home on the way everywhere and it makes the time go by now granted 
I'm not working eight to five and I don't get to go home every night. But if I can make this work and I can make as much money as I could at a work week from eight to five, doing that day after day after day, week after week after week, I don't know. Before I started this, I was working with my friend and I didn't get, he had a little retail shop. I didn't get paid very much. I was making uh, about $2,000 a month. I just made almost that in five days. I'm going home with almost the same paycheck I made in a month, working eight to five in five days. But I had to be out on the road for five straight days. At least with my eight to five job, I get to go home every night. I get to see my family every night. I got to have dinner with them and do whatever every night. I also wasn't putting the miles on this truck that I was when I was working eight to five. There was an interesting comment about that on my last one where a guy said that you can't count the truck as depreciation because you have to buy that equipment in order to make this work. So depreciation on a truck doesn't really count towards your rate per mile. You just need to keep the thing going. You need to put money away for your next truck and that's really it because once this truck gets to two, three, four, five hundred thousand miles, is it really worth much at that point anyways? Not really. So I kind of see where he's going with that. However, at the same time, if you have to go buy a new truck and you have to make payments on that truck, that's something that you'd have to consider on, on what your situation is. Your situation is going to be different than mine. All I'm saying is this is what I'm making. So if you already own a truck or if you have payments on your truck, then you need to at least do enough to cover your payment and then some to bring, to bring home some money. If you could do it to where you could just stay out and do it all the time, <laughs> I think you'd be all right. You just gotta pick and choose which route you go. So yeah, that's it for this one. Five days, three trailers, we're headed back home. Hopefully the next one I'll be able to stay out. I wanna do the next one for 10 days and see how that works. I wanna be able to do a reset and then keep going and see how much money I can make on that. Because if, I can, if I'm bringing home $1,500 on this one, I could do it double that, make three grand, I'm already out. So I think I'd make even more because I don't have to have that deadhead time from San Antonio to Indiana. Hopefully I can get a trailer that goes back to San Antonio or back to Texas on my way home. But before that, I wanna do six or seven to wherever or maybe just a couple to California and back and then go to Texas that would take me 10 days I'd make some serious money also put some serious miles on this truck that's where we're at are you gonna do it are you thinking about doing it I don't know I think you should at least try call the recruiters there's uh, several companies out there. I'll name the ones that I know. Horizon, Wave Express, Classic Transport, Synergy, Bennett, Jimbo. These are the ones that I've heard of. So you can look these up and contact the recruiters. If you contact Classic Transport, tell them that Matt Clark sent you. Maybe they'll give me a bonus, I don't know. Probably not. They'll probably charge me some fees for something. For sending you over there <laughs> i really don't know but anyways we signing off next video will be when i get home and i fill this thing up with fuel how much we we spent from the time i left to the time i got home and how much we made how much we're putting in the bank that's it Whew. okay so after all that did we make any money the results are in. Here we go. Miles I drove, 4,632.8. Miles I drove, 
379.5 gallons of fuel spent $1,482.93. Average mile per gallon, 12.2. So, you know, not too bad. How much did I get paid in total? $2,828.87. So after my fuel, I came home with $1,000. $345.94. I made $269.19 per day, and I made about 61 cents per mile after all my expenses. So, not too bad. I really think that if I would have stayed out longer, had I gone back to New Mexico instead of coming home, I could have made even more money, at least double. Now, I would have had to gone back, like I said, and done a reset and then you know started hitting it again probably monday afternoon because i think about i think i have a yeah i think i think the hours would have lined lined up to monday afternoon and then i could have done some more runs and hoped for another southern texas run so i don't know i could have came home with double that amount but it would have taken me double the amount of days too so i don't know it's up to you guys to decide whether you want to do this or not. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments and I will try to respond to everybody. When am I going to do this again? I think uh, my daughter's birthday is this week, so probably the next week I'm going to go back out there and try to do it for a week and then come back home. I'm going to postpone my CDL class till January 8th. That way I can spend Christmas with my family, my kids. I have my kids this uh, Christmas this year, so I want to be able to spend time with them. And school doesn't allow me any days off except for Christmas Day. So we might go back and try to do another week run, try to put another $1,300 in the bank. We'll see. All right, till the next one. Peace. I'm out of here.